Hello, then many thanks for keeping us company. Why in the morning we are talking about the impact of climate change in relation to global warming? And today is the World Health, uh, World Meteorological Day. I'm speaking to Patricia Nyangura. She's a climate scientist, principal meteorologist at Kenya Meteorological Department. Good morning. Morning to you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Historia Corona in a Kupeleka. Nanina Nikoapa sanitized and everything, mm -hmm. so keeping the required distance. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can. Are, are you manage. people working from home? Well, because we are an essential service, we have to provide weather information for shipping, for aircrafts. We have a rotor where very few people are in the office. Wait, did you say aircraft? Yes. You come in? Absolutely. How? I never knew that. Wow. So uh, an airplane or a pilot will never take off without weather information, like the winds, and it's, it's like it's, it's paramount. Okay. So we have to provide that information. So we cannot, and we work 24 hours every single day. The world always have a perception mm -hmm. of uh, you people because you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so you we do a lot participate. More. All right, it's yes. good to know. Now, today uh, we are talking about the World Meteorological Day, and um, global warming has become the heat of the uh, stories or issues in our country mm -hmm. or in the world at large, yeah. and we're having problems. So maybe you could start by telling us mm -hmm. what does the World Meteorological Day mean and what are you looking forward to? What's the theme actually for this okay. year? Okay, so maybe we, I begin with a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, begun in 1950 um, when the World Meteorological Organization was commissioned. And so the role of the World Meteorological Day is to celebrate the, or rather to look at the impact that the meteorological and hydrological organizations around the world play uh, to ensure safety and security of people within the various nations that they're in. Mm -hmm. This year's theme is climate and water, which is very fitting because yesterday was World Water yeah, Day. World water Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, climate and water are inextricably linked. You cannot have one without the other. Mm -hmm. So that's the theme for this year. And exactly, I will take you both on the climate mm -hmm. and the water. I'm sure you will. Now, because you're coming from the same department, you will tell <laughs> me now, what's the climate and climate variability? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can tell us the impact of global warming. Mm -hmm. So for, um, to contextualize it to Kenya exactly, for many years we've had two rainfall seasons in March to May and then October to December. And if you ask my grandparents, they would tell you March 15th it will start raining and in October, mid-October it will start raining. But in more recent years we're seeing quite a change from that. We have seasons coming either very late or coming very early. And so the seasons have become erratic. And the number of rain days within each season is continuing to reduce. We have more intense storms, we have more droughts, and this we can all attribute to our changing climate. And what would be the contributing factors to all these changes? Well, globally, pollution, human activities that lead to the increase of greenhouse gases within the environment mm -hmm. is what is causing the global warming. So we have more heat being trapped within the Earth's atmosphere and then the global temperature goes, the global average temperature goes higher. And then therefore we see a change in the climate. Over years, over years I've heard of global warming, mm -hmm. global warming, there are emissions, there mm -hmm. are this. What has been done or what is being done? A lot is being done from our perspective, uh, especially from the, um, National Hydrometeorological uh, Centers, we produce a lot of research mm -hmm. into how um, climate change is affecting mm -hmm. various sectors and how pollution is continuing and what we expect in the future. And that is the same with the entire global scientific community. So we produce that research. Mm -hmm. And then um, people use our research and apply it into various aspects mm -hmm. to either mitigate or adapt to these changes. Mm -hmm. And those who are mitigating, um, their focus is on reducing the emissions of greenhouse gases, which in turn will lead to reduction, or rather slowing down the process of warming of the environment. Mm -hmm. And those focused on adaptation look at now that it has changed, and these are the things that we're seeing, what do we do now to be able to cope with the current conditions, which are very different from what we are used to. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of effort that is actually being put in place. But okay, I, I, I appreciate the efforts that are being uh, 
put in place, mm -hmm. but also we have we have companies or industries coming up day in yeah. day out. They are there. We will have ideas. We will, but of course the emissions will continue. Mm -hmm. How other way can we maybe? mitigate these other than the research and everything that mm -hmm. has been done. Is there anything that can be told of these people? Because if you want to come up with an industry or any building, mm -hmm. you have the authorities to approach and what they will yeah. tell you. Mm -hmm. Then uh, why do we have continued emissions in our industries? Well, one thing I would say is it would be useful to use renewable energy as opposed to using maybe fossil fuels, which is what leads to higher emissions. Mm -hmm. And that's the push. Like even in Kenya, I, I'm not sure if it's enforced, but there should be subsidies on probably like using solar energy to run industries. And that should help because uh, renewable energy is, does not deplete the Earth's resources. Mm -hmm. And if we use the sun, the wind, and even geothermal power, it should be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, some countries have measures where they have a capping system for the emissions that you can give. Right. And so that gives a bit of a leeway for industries to work within. We can emit just up to this much, and if we go beyond it, then either we have to pay mm -hmm. to emit, oh. or you are prosecuted, for example. But I don't think that has reached uh, most of African countries. Yeah, because I wanted yeah. to ask you, mm -hmm. where, where is Kenya, and when will Kenya get there? <laughs> Kenya is What's doing a lot. Uh, okay, I wouldn't call it a problem per se, but we're really doing a lot. Like the Ministry of Environment, um, the past, this year and last year, mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of tree planting going on. Mm -hmm. And it's very important in the fight against climate change because trees take away oxygen from the environment. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, they're called sinks. The ocean and the forest are sinks of carbon dioxide. Okay. So the um, efforts that the Ministry of Environment has been putting, pushing for more tree planting, has been really useful. Mm -hmm because it will lead to us capturing a lot of carbon from the environment and then storing it within the plants. All right, you have mentioned of the Minister of Environment, yeah. so we, you could say we have the political will. Yes, from our cabinet secretary, he's the one who's been spearheading this, so yeah. All right. Now we have heard of the typhoons, the cyclone day that was uh, in Africa yeah. the other day, so mm -hmm. what other extremes do we are there from the changes of climate and maybe the weather? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, how cyclones form is because of intense heating of the oceans. Mm -hmm. So if we have higher temperatures both on land and in the ocean, we can expect more frequent cyclones. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the research is still ongoing to see how exactly mm -hmm. climate change or these warming temperatures and warming of the sea surface temperatures mm -hmm. will lead to an increase in these cyclones. So that is one thing that we are seeing because of climate change. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing longer periods of drought. Like um, drought have been common in, in most African countries, but it, you, it would come and then the, we would have a nice season thereafter and then we'd be able to balance it out. Mm -hmm. But now we are seeing even um, continuous year, years where you see like three failed seasons and then you have a longer drought. So that's a direct impact of climate change. And even flooding, where we have very intense rainfall in a very short period of time, mm -hmm. still an effect of climate change. You have talked of flooding, and I remember Kenya has been one of the victims mm -hmm. very often. Like just the other day, we had this mudslides in West yeah. Pokot, and mm -hmm. also we had uh, some hunger strike last year, and mm -hmm. even in 2018. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Working together with the Ministry of, uh, say, Agriculture, yeah. how do you come in? How are you advising the farmers? Mm -hmm. Because we've seen, even we had the locusts the other day, yeah. and I'm sure they are not going in even two stories of Corona. They are working from home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've, I've seen that on social media. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then how, how is the MET department coming mm -hmm. in, in advising the farmers and even in, with their research to the government or... Mm -hmm affronting the ideas on what we can do because the farmers are now confused exactly. when should we plant yeah. so we're having a problem in terms of food security mm -hmm. what has been done or what is being done so um, as the med department we instituted a program a couple of years ago called uh, participatory scenario planning mm -hmm. So every, the two seasons match the short rains and the long rains, we produce a national forecast and then it's disseminated at the national level. Then in every county, we have county directors and then they take this information and customize it for their counties using the information they have, what economic activities take place there. Then they call a meeting with stakeholders. 
so among the stakeholders, we have uh, extension officers from Ministry of Agriculture, together with farmer representatives of farmer groups. Mm -hmm. And then they customize this information and package it in a way that the farmer can be able to use it mm -hmm. to decide uh, what activities to do on their farm. Mm -hmm. And also every week they, pro they provide a weekly forecast. So working closely has enabled us to be able to help these farmers to cope with this very erratic mm -hmm. weather. Now, uh, I'll bring in the question I was told to ask you by my co-presenter. <laughs> yeah. Why do you tell us it will rain and then it fails? And I will ask you a question back. Mm -hmm. um, most people tell us that uh, we say that, but where do you get your information from? A med department. We, we trust you people. Uh -huh. Through what channels? Uh, what you will front the medium mm -hmm. and maybe what you put on your pages if mm -hmm. you are told that it will rain. Mm -hmm. and brace yourself for longer rains, mm -hmm. then boom, jua. <laughs> so well, what happens? So the climate change has destroyed the Not exactly. The, mon most, the biggest problem with, that we have with our users is access to information. Mm -hmm. Like if I asked a, a, random, a random person if they realize our meteorologist will say exactly what you've asked. And if I ask them, give me an example of a day where we said it would rain and it didn't, they really don't have an example. So it's a stereotype mm -hmm. and it's the world over. But if you look at our statistics throughout the past couple of years, we have a very high heat rate of, we say it will rain, and it will rain. Mm -hmm. One of the things that maybe would be a challenge is um, forecasting at a point. Like Nairobi is really big. Mm -hmm. So if you give a forecast for Nairobi and say it will rain, parts of Nairobi will have rainfall and others will not, which is very common mm -hmm. and very normal. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't rain here, you'll say we lied to you. But we if lied. someone who is in um, downtown and it rains, we'll say Because at times you will say right. Nairobi and its environs. Then Nairobi doesn't, the environs does. Then, yeah. We still got it right still. Uh, so is it a way, is it a way to dispel uh, the, the surety of people okay. will not hold you accountable or it's the not truth? Not exactly. It's the truth plus it's uh, the science of weather forecasting is probabilistic. It's not an, it's not an exact science. Oh. It's not... Um, I don't know, there are sciences that are exact, like someone can tell you, you will get this and you will get it. Mm -hmm. But ours is a probabilistic, and so we usually give percentages with our forecast. Mm -hmm. So there's a probability, usually a small one, that it, whatever we say will not happen. Mm -hmm. And if it's a bigger probability, we also tag it on our forecasts. I, I, would, I would want us to digress, Kidogo. Okay. Uh, now that you tell people it will rain, it yeah. doesn't rain, mm -hmm. and then you people... Uh, People are bashing you maybe on your pages on social media. Mm -hmm. They're saying, oh, to Liambua, to Liambua, look at them. Yeah. As in, how does it impact your workability and uh, performance? Not really much because we understand our science. Mm -hmm. So we understand that it is probabilistic, like I said. Mm -hmm. So, of course, um, it's a, it can be discouraging, especially if you're a new meteorologist. And so mm -hmm. probably you're starting to learn how to interact with the public. But uh, because we fully understand that it's a probabilistic science, we don't expect it to exactly, it's not a hundred percent, it's not exact, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, now, um, do you think the public, and now if we may bring in the issue of what, do you think the public knows or they are aware of the importance of managing and protecting our water sources? Because the mm -hmm. other day we had a problem with mm -hmm. people invading Mao uh, and other catch, uh, catchment areas. Yeah. How are you working closely with the Ministry of Forest, uh, Forest and uh, Environment to ensure even the public are aware mm -hmm. of the importance of their water? So we really try our best to um, raise awareness. Mm -hmm. And we do it mainly on our social media. And when we work with um, our CS when he goes planting, we always accompany them. Mm -hmm. But uh, the greatest honors for this falls within the, ministry, within the water department. And a lot of people sometimes separate the issues in, t in, in that mm -hmm. when they're cutting trees or doing these activities that lead to reduction of water, they do not link it to their lack of water a few months down the line. Sure. So the main challenge we have is um, helping people to see how their actions mm -hmm. directly affect them in the in the future mm -hmm. and we do this through social media and even through like the world uh, met day mm -hmm. 
if not for Corona, we'd have, usually we have a big celebration where we invite schools and corporates, and then we do presentations, we do plays, um, music, that highlight the link between, um, highlight the theme for mm -hmm. the year for World Meteorological Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I would ask, if you're involving these people, where does the youth come in? Um, How are you involving the youth in ensuring we have, uh, we are protecting our water sources, mm -hmm. we are doing this and that to ensure we, our climate and our weather pattern is correct, maybe? Okay. Yeah. So directly, we don't work directly with them, mm -hmm. but through some programs, uh, we, we, we get donors who um, want to fund some programs, and then so they involve us and bring the youth together. An example I can share is um, we uh, last year we had a, a workshop with uh, bloggers on social media, but environmental ones mm -hmm. and activists. And so we talked to them about uh, the science of climate and climate change mm -hmm. just to um, give them more ammunition when they are doing what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And so we support them, for example, with data if they need data to present something. We also support them with, uh, if they need an expert opinion, we mm -hmm. also work with them. So through these uh, donor-funded programs, we are able to work with youth and even disadvantaged communities mm -hmm. to be able to equip them to, for example, disseminate mm -hmm. and reach people that us personally we cannot reach. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of water, mm -hmm. um, I was telling my, uh, my friend here, my colleague, yeah. uh, we have destroyed our uh, uh, the earth's kidney in terms of how uh, the water is being uh, scarcely and used. Mm -hmm. The little we have, it has not been um, of essence yeah. in the recent past. And actually we have seen the misuse of water in many ways. We're also uh, speaking of the same. Mm -hmm. What is being done to promote the impact and uh, climate urbanization in terms of law? Are we having laws that will maybe help to protect our sources? There are, and um, like there's the Water Act. Mm -hmm. And so when those legislators are coming up with this, they consult. So both us from the Ministry of, uh, everyone from the Ministry of Environment, the Meteorological Department, and the water people, mm -hmm. so they consult. Mm -hmm. So there is the Water Act. Um, my main, and um, this is very, it's personally, not on behalf of anyone, is how do we then um, trickle it down? Because it's an act up there, mm -hmm. but how do you legislate it at the lower level? So that has, uh, in my opinion, has been a bit of a challenge and maybe it's an area that is open for people to be able to look at. How do we legislate such an act and how do we um, make sure that then it trickles down to the local person mm -hmm. and they are able to see directly how their actions impact them and how making positive decisions will help them in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, speaking of the same, I, I, I have seen a lot of water running. Mm -hmm. uh, you ask me where it ends to, I won't tell you. We mm -hmm. have even the rivers, we have the dams, we have uh, the, uh, or every other thing that we, they will say mm -hmm. in and aquamoto. But we have seen human activity destroyed. Yeah. We have seen people tap it even for irrigation. Mm -hmm. But still we're having problems in terms of uh, how we use our waters, mm -hmm. we have we have emissions by industries again to mm -hmm. the our water Into sources. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have awareness on how these waters will affect us and mm -hmm. maybe ensuring the sectors that are involved with the stakeholders they are encouraged to foster towards low carbon water? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure to some extent there is awareness. Like I know of a study someone did of water within Nairobi University, mm -hmm. the quality of the water. Yeah. And it wasn't the best quality of water. So I'm sure the research is there. Mm -hmm. But the actions that may be put in place to correct the wrongs that already exist mm -hmm. and to prevent the future ones mm -hmm. is what I'm not exactly sure about and cannot really comment about mm -hmm. what is being done. Mm -hmm. But um, like you mentioned, the quality of water is one of the aspects of water that is very important because you might have a lot of water, but it's not really useful for us. Mm -hmm. We cannot uh, drink it, we cannot use it for our activities. Mm -hmm. And therefore still we suffer loss. So there is opportunity again for um, 
leg either legislation or if it already exists, mm -hmm. then making sure that people are here to it. Because, yeah, like Nairobi River, I hear stories of when it used to be clear, but I've never mm -hmm. seen it clear. It's full uh, of effluence yes. right now, yeah. Yeah, because the mm -hmm. same people were complaining we are having dirty water, the same people who are dirty fine. Exactly. Uh, so we, we are at a point where we are unable to take care of our environment and mm -hmm. whatever it costs to have um, a good environment. Yeah. Now, as we wind up, I'd want you to tell us mm -hmm. um, this year's theme, the things you want to address and the challenges that you've been going through mm -hmm. and maybe the solutions you have found, maybe if any, and uh, who would you want now to come on board to ensure you have achieved mm -hmm. as a department? So the theme is climate and water and the slogan is um, count every drop because every drop counts. Wow. Yes. Count every drop? Because every drop counts. Hmm. The answers of the first part, um, count every drop, is to encourage us on a personal level to be careful about how we use water. And an example would be how do you brush your teeth? Like when you're brushing your teeth, do you let the tap run throughout the entire two minutes that you're brushing your teeth? And that is something we can all do personally without having someone to come and uh, check for us and make sure or close your water and all that. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, we will see a very big difference. And the second part, because every drop counts, if we waste this water, then in the long run, mm -hmm. we will not have uh, good quality water for us to be able to use. Mm -hmm. And personally, I feel that it is every individual's responsibility. Because if we are always looking at uh, what are they doing or what is he doing, and if they're doing nothing, then why should I do anything? We are working for the greater, it's not for the greater good. In the end, we will all eventually suffer. So we are encouraging people on a personal level, even to make sure that the kind of fuel they use, they use it very efficiently mm -hmm. to reduce having to take fuel every time. Mm -hmm as well as the water. If you're using water, make it efficient. How do you shower? How do you brush your teeth? How do you wash your dishes? Actually, you, you mentioning of our waters, and these are the go, uh, gone of the pitlet cleans. So we're having this uh, flush. So mm -hmm. I hear we lose about 10 liters. Mm -hmm. So I'm imagining that Kamasai people are home. Mm, exactly. And of course, there are things you, are, you can't avoid. We yeah. are humans. It's by nature. Mm -hmm. So I'm imagining how much what is being wasted or mm. is being used for that case mm. because of this then how i have seen some of the uh, industries i've seen some of the uh, these people coming up with the idea of the water system where you have the little amount mm. and then the, we have the, the other one yeah, yeah, yeah. so how about the old uh, buildings older buildings yes uh, that don't have that those systems yes maybe the owners need to Move up their to games that and system. update themselves. Exactly, all right. yeah, because it, it, in the end, it works towards reducing wastage of water. I've seen. Um, or we improvise. Uneka bucket, uneka kiesi ni unona itato. Ne ispoto sha unongeza. You tongeza tu inuwe. Maybe. Yeah, I was saying I've seen, um, or, or rather, I've read in some research or seen on, on documentaries how some countries. The water that you use to wash your hands mm -hmm. is what goes into the cistern for flushing. So you reuse the water and you still keep it clean. Oh. So um, in my opinion, I feel that would be a very um, interesting and quite useful way to deal with uh, especially that flushing water. Mm -hmm. But it's, I've seen it in very developed countries, so I don't know what the infrastructure would be like to be able to enable us to put that into place. I'm thinking even the water we used in our kitchen can mm -hmm. be reused exactly yeah so it's reused for other purposes that don't require us to either the drink chicken, it yeah. or cook with it mm -hmm. and yeah i've seen people recycle water mm -hmm. so it could be an area that could be explored to, be, to enable us to save on water mm -hmm. waste yeah so how about the challenge that you people are going through and you, you need mm -hmm. them addressed so as at the med department our main or what we are currently working on is on better communication so as to help our users of all levels mm -hmm. be able to understand our forecasts and what information we put out there mm -hmm. because a lot is lost in translation mm -hmm. so if we and we are working with um, 
um, international organizations, the World Met organizations, they train um, scientists to be able to communicate in a better way mm -hmm. to enable people understand exactly what we mean when we say what we say. Mm -hmm. And if we achieve that, then I believe we are on the right path towards working better with the country. Do you think we should go back to the days where we would have a weather segment in our broadcast uh, in our nini, TV, yes. Should it go I back believe then? The, yeah, that then would be why very useful. What happened? Bona to litoka uko? Well, uh, with TV and uh, mm. so uh, um, airtime is expensive. Oh. Right. Mm. You, you know that airtime yeah, is expensive, yeah. Mm -hmm. So at some point we stopped because one hour we had a studio that uh, due to unfortunate circumstances burned down. But uh, um, when we try to revive it, because airtime is expensive, a TV station would not give us time unless we are able to bring advertisements with it. Mm. Yeah. So that's why mm. maybe mm -hmm. probably we yes. have people who don't know what will happen. Yeah. So you have remained with the people of... Uh, Airlines, they will depend on you yes, highly, and, and the shipping, farmers, yes. unless they've been told by the media, <laughs> it never happened. No, but the farmers, we work with them directly. So using our county directors in every county, we okay. work with them directly. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are some um, sectors that cannot operate without the weather information, and so we have to work with them directly mm -hmm. through other government ministries. Mm -hmm. So because we are all under government, it's very easy to work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are able to support these other sectors. All right, so I'm yeah. giving you 30 seconds. This mm -hmm. is your camera. Okay. Y tell us what you're going out there to do, what mm -hmm. you expect, and uh, your final words. Okay. Honestly. So um, just in line with the theme for the World Meteorological Day, uh, Climate and Water, it's important to pay attention to the fact that um, our use of water really will affect in the future how the, the availability of water. It might not directly affect us today, but the people who are coming, the future generations, will be affected. So if we can be very careful with how we use water, it would be very useful and it will be very loving for the generations to come. All right. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank for you for having me. Thank All you. right, back home, many thanks for keeping us company. And you've had count every drop because every drop counts. She has been my guest, Patricia Nyingiro, climate scientist, principal meteorological at Kenya Meteorological Department. Coming up next will be Valentine with the health. Stay tuned. Let's hear what she has for us and what we will learn. And by the way, keep on sanitizing because it is important. As long as you're indoors, you are even safer. So keep us company and learn from us. My name is Dereva Hilary, we'll be seeing you in a few.